Lindenberg had his debut win in the Wizbank Modified Touring Car Championship at East London last Saturday, powering his Gestetner forward to victory in both heats ahead of Woody Hepburn and Ben Morgan. I suggest you get your jet skis out because the Barber Spawn 500 is up next. Round two of this year's SA Off-Road Championship saw the Off-Road Brigade tackle the Barbers Band 500. A race that is traditionally one of the toughest of the national calendar drew a full field of special and production vehicles, motorcycles and quad races. Year in and year out, national championships produce some new talent and some familiar faces reappear on the scene. Back in action after a year on the sideline is former Barbers Band winner Richard Manning. It's a bit slower this year. Um because I had a year off last year uh, due to a little bit of financial constraints. Um, but I'm starting again this year. Sun City was alright, a good race. Um, I had a bit of trouble in the mud and got some we uh, wire caught in the back wheel. Um, so that slowed me down a bit, but other than that, it's going good. I thought, yeah, we had a very good run at Sun City. Uh, the car ran very hot because of the very muddy conditions and it actually turned out to quite a hot day so the car ran very hot, it used a bit of oil, oil pressure ran low near the end uh, so we decided to rebuild the motor completely, in fact we put another motor in and it's actually proved the right thing to do because it develops a lot more horsepower and the car's really nice and strong, we've gone through the whole car from bumper to bumper, stripped it, replaced rose joints, haven't missed out anything because we really want to go for the championship this year. From production vehicle championship contender Neil Woolrich to Marius Bahrain, who this year will campaign a single-seater in the special vehicle class. Marius, uh, you've changed from a twin-seater to a single-seater in a rather interesting car, a lot smaller, a lot more compact. Tell us about it, how it's uh, designed and configured. Um, well, that's basically my idea, is to go lighter. Weight in off-road, to me, is a very big factor. And I went to the small car, it's much lighter, it's easier for me to handle, accelerates better and stops quicker. So that's basically what I want. When it comes to innovation, off-roaders also come up with bright ideas. Tell us about that uh, double visor you have on there. Um, this, is, uh, this is a piece of Pyrex glass on here. And what happens is this is made out of leg sand. So what happens is when you get mud on it and you wipe it with your glove or with the thing, it, it scratches the lens. So we're using um, a Pyrex glass on here. It's a little bit stronger. And it's easier to wipe and it keeps clean and you've got vision all the time. So they, they say it works. I'll tell you tomorrow because it's going to rain here for sure. <laughs> I just don't know when. How people tell us a bit you doing a leg for the veteran? This is my husband and veteran here at Barberspan. And we have been a few times. We are very optimistic for the year to win. We are not so much something that we have to say, a bit of rem. And this is for us, it's not yet sorted as we want to win. For the unfortunate Errol Dalton, the race was over before it started. Uh, it was more about half past seven. So John brought a jet ski, two jet skis out to, to play on the dam. And it was, just happened so quick. I was on the one jet ski and Daryl Curtis was on the other one and uh, we just collided on the, in the middle of the dam and took me out. And, uh, got taken to hospital and the x-ray and there was a bone broken in my leg. The 25km time trial produced a scintillating performance from former champions Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne in the Mototech Raceco. With the Raceco performing to its full potential, Schilling and Thorne set up a time only three seconds slower than the fastest bike. The pair were half a minute ahead of brothers Hermann and Karl Heinz Sorwald in the BF Goodrich Raceco. There was also an impressive performance from veteran Linton Draper and navigator Cory Ngobeni in another of the awesome Racecos. Springboks, Cassie could see her, Richard Leake, would again out in the Castrol Toyota Hilux, affectionately known as Fred, with a new truck said to be in the pipeline for the pair. En moeilijk met die deze reis, ik ben niet beloofd te maken. Die gilo is bezig om te werken. En maar het gaat tijd vatten met die bevoegdheid te bouwen. Dus kan je met weer nacht bouwen. Reigning South African production vehicle champions Arpi Reinecker and Robin Houghton took a more conservative approach to the time trials in the Bank Ventura to Land Cruiser. In recent years, the wily Reinecker, who farms in the area, has virtually made the race his own property. 
Not surprisingly, Reinecke and Hutton were high on the list of pre-race favourites, along with the Italians Neil Woolridge and Paul Fermark in the Nissan Sani. The Nissan won races last season and is always a threat for top honours, but the production vehicle runners were completely outclassed in the time trial. The top ten positions all went to special vehicles, with Schilling and Thorn leading the way. With Alfie Cox back in South Africa after a lengthy overseas campaign, there were no guesses as to who was favoured to win the motorcycle category. This is my 11th Barber's Run this year. I remember coming here in 85 for my first one and uh, Jeremy's brother, Mark, had, he'd done, it was his 10th one and I thought, gee, 10 Barber's Buns and here we go, it's my 11th Barber's Bun and it hasn't been the best race for me. I've, I think I've only had four, four or five wins in, those, in the 10 times and uh, it's always been second, third, very close and I like the race and I just hope maybe this year will go okay. Back in the saddle after a serious leg injury and a year racing cars on the track, Jeremy Davies will tackle some marathon events overseas later in the year. What's this that you can't stay away? No, it's not that I can't stay away. I'm doing the total super series and uh, a few long ones in preparation for Australian safari. That's it, I'm not here to uh, break my neck, I'm here to practice, get some good riding in, so the best place to come is one of these long races. The pro action KTM pair of Alfie Cox and Darrell Curtis led home the bike time trial, with Louis Kairis and Ronald Bailey the surprises in the top five. There were no time trial surprises in the quad racing category, as expected it was Vickers van Dieventer, who has a dairy farm in the Lichtenberg area, who led home the pack on the Jojo Tanks Yamaha. Von Dieventer is currently in a class of his own, but behind him there were one or two fierce battles with the Breckel brothers, Mark and Paul, doing the chasing along with Yuri Duplessis. The quad racers compete in modified and standard classes, and when the dust had settled, it was Van Dieventer who finished more than 20 seconds ahead of Mark Breckel, with brother Paul third on the second of the Brasco Refrigeration Yamahas. Van Dieventer and the Breckels are experienced off-road racers, but for Corey and Gabeni, the Barberspan 500 is part of a learning curve. Corey, you've been with Mr. Draper now for some four years. Where did it all start and where is it all going to end? Uh, I start as a, as a painter and then uh, I come to work uh, on the racing cars as a, um, a spinner boy. Um, one year uh, later, I start uh, to, be, uh, to do the preparation in the cars. And um, after three years, now I'm a fourth year at the uh, Draper People's Company and I start to uh, navigate there with Mr. Draper. We do the roof uh, and um, Draper 1000. Uh, um, we're actually doing well. I don't know, maybe at the end of the day I'll drive. But... You want to know what my strategy is for today? Yeah. To go out and give them carrots. Yeah. Lead from the front. Hopefully it hasn't rained too much last night. Um, there's of course an advantage for those following us, which I often have to do, that there will not be that much dust. We have changed uh, this morning the car to some tyres which should handle the mud a bit better. Chance we're taking. Mention the Barber's Fund 500 to farmers in the area and they grin broadly, with the race guaranteed to bring the rain. Overnight downpours would have turned sections of the route into quagmires, but it was easy going in the opening stages, with the Solwood brothers in hot pursuit of Schilling and Thorn. Third were Bucks Carolyn and Kenny Schulthammer and the race co on loan from Botswana driver JJ Vormerans while Carolyn waits to take delivery of a new race co from the United States. <laughs> Off-road races provide an annual treat for local residents who all know the best vantage points. RP Reinecke is a firm favourite among the locals and was into an immediate lead in the production vehicle class. Right behind the bank fin Toyota Land Cruiser were Yucky Hubert and Donnie Smith in a four-wheel drive Jojo Tanks Volkswagen powered by a Volvo engine. One of the more interesting vehicles in the race, the Beetle, was going like a train. Former production vehicle champion Cliff Barker, with Malcolm Joubert alongside him in the SVM Land Rover, were lying second in the production vehicle category. Right behind them was Richard Carolyn in the first of the single-seaters in the Lubrication Equipment Race Co. Carolyn won the Sun City 400, the first event of the season, but for others, there were tales of early woe. Uh, we were 
We stopped at the road over here, and the, the guy behind us, in the muddy conditions, couldn't break and just rammed into the back of us and uh, helped us move the diff about five meters forward. Uh, we're trying to repair the damage, but we don't have enough spares here. Favourable conditions on early sections of the route soon gave way to plenty of mud and water. At the front, the production vehicle category, R.P. Reinecke and Robin Houghton had matters under control in the Bankfin Toyota Land Cruiser. The special vehicle entry of Yaki Joubert and Danny Smith was still going strong, but the 4x4 Volkswagen was later to run into problems. Also going along steadily were Cliff Barker and Marc and Joubert in the SVM Land Rover with a big V8 motor sounding healthy. Bucks Carolyn and Kenny Schulthammer had plenty of opportunity to test their new scratch-proof face visors, and thus far they appear to be working. Steadily closing the gap on his younger brother was Obert Richard Carolyn, who revels in wet conditions in the lubrication equipment race car. The steady pace and consistency are the elder Carolyn's recipe for success, and it works. Nick Harper and Richard Hill in the Pro-M Rock Oil race car had also opted for a steady pace. The pair were moving up the pegging order, although all the water around did not always agree with the engine electrical systems. Behind the Harper Hill combination, the Nissan Sani, in the hands of Neil Woolridge and Paul Fermark, was lying third in the production vehicle category, behind the Renica Houghton Land Cruiser and the Barker Joubert Land Rover. A terrific personal battle was going on between Linton Draper and Cory Ngobeni in the Draper Excavator Hire Raceco and special vehicle class B leaders Franz Chapek Senior and Junior in the V Motors Raceco. There were times when the route marking was a little dodgy and saturated pans that often stretched for kilometres made life difficult for all concerned. race leaders Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne it was the end of the road. The Mototech race car was limping to retirement with a damaged engine. Out in front of the Quad Racer Brigade, Vickers van Dierventer was skating all over the place on the Jojo Tanks Yamaha and doing his impersonation of a motorised two-step. If you thought Van Dierventer was having problems, spare a thought for Paul Breckel, who found a new method of coming to an abrupt halt. Oh, shame. It's lost to get into a lot. And to get it on full as well. <laughs> Breckel escaped with nothing more than injured pride, but his race was also over. On the bloody seat, I'm Sefi van Skakbeek and Evert van Rensburg were wet and covered in mud, but on their way to a win in Class C in the Orco in the special vehicle category. The pair looked to be full of the joys of spring. Showing a little more circumspection than Paul Beckel a little earlier, Christo Fodermanova was having a great run at the front of the standard quad racer category and was running fourth overall. There was plenty of drama early on in the motorcycle category. Most of the front runners found themselves hopelessly lost in the first 80 kilometres. By the time they'd sorted out that little problem, the likes of Daryl Curtis and Alfie Cox, who crashed heavily and lost his number plate in the process, found themselves in the unaccustomed position of racing alongside backmarkers. From then on, it was a case of having to throw caution to the wind. The conditions did not make it any easier for the back markers in the quad racer category. Behind the quad racer rear guard, there was an all-out charge as the likes of Grant Broomfield set off after the AGA Panasonic Pro Action KTM pair of Curtis and Cox. It was a no-holds-barred racing as the quicker riders threw everything into making up for lost time when they strayed off the route. First into the refuel and service point at the halfway mark was Bank Venturi to Land Cruiser of R.P. Reinecke and Robin Houghton. Reinecke's intimate knowledge of the Barberspan 500 conditions, be they wet or dry, was again turning out to be a telling factor. 
<laughs> Not that it was plain sailing for Reineke and Houghton. We had a hell of a lot through that water, uh, getting a uh, miss from the engine. There's a lot of water going through the air filter. And, uh, but otherwise it's going well. As Redeker and Houghton set off from the service point, Cliff Barker and Malcolm Joubert in the SBM Land Rover arrived on the scene closely followed by the Woolridge for Mark Nissan Sani and Richard Carroll in the Lubrication Equipment Race Co. We got lost there for, for 20 minutes, man. The service area was getting a little crowded when Bucks Carolyn and Kenny Scholthammer arrived in a six-sounding car that was headed for retirement. A drive in the park, it was not. We can't, uh, we've been lost, all of us, even with navigators. We're getting lost. Anyway. It was back to the fray for Barker and Joubert in the SBM Land Rover. They were just ahead of Richard Carolyn with Craig Draper and Wade Perrins charging into the service area at the Castrol Raceco after moving from 55th position to 5th. Preparing to tackle the last leg, Paul for Mark in the Nissan Sani hot seat was in philosophical mood. Hey, buddy, eh? <laughs> that thing was wiser and keep things clean. But we saw as well, so it should be up there just there. The service area was a hive of activity with cars in and out of the pits at regular intervals. For some, like veteran Linton Draper, the long distance races get tougher and tougher. This is really a test of man and machine. And I think maybe the machine's going to outlast this man today, that's for sure. But yeah, I tell you, I thought we'd that he come to an off-road race, not a jet ski race. We found a pan down the bottom there. He just had to put foot, but it's been greater. Back on the route, the Renica Houghton Bankman Toyota Land Cruiser was running at the front of the field and leading the production vehicle category ahead of the Barker Joubert Land Rover. Young locals found plenty of ways to amuse themselves as they waited for the cars to appear on the scene, with crews given an enthusiastic reception. With brother Bucks and Kenny Scholthammer and the Silver brothers among the retirements, Richard Carolyn in the lubrication equipment race coat had taken charge of the special vehicle category and was third on the road. Local pair Niels Lemmer and Henry Castain in the Toyota Hilux were in complete control in Class E in the production vehicle category and were given a tremendous reception by the young enthusiasts. <laughs> Marius Berain and Sister Margie won the Barberspan 500 last year in the race co. With a little mighty mag hardly missing a beat, Berain was second in the special vehicle category and had taken over the lead in Class B from the Chepek father and son team. Not all the local inhabitants were impressed by what was going on in the race, but Hein Kravler and Charles Barmerens had cause for satisfaction. They were on their way to a top 10 finish for a win in Class G in the production vehicle category in another Toyota Hilux. It was an impressive performance from the pair, but behind them there was plenty of drama unfolding in the motorcycle section. Because of the early mix-up of the route, the two-wheel field was still closely bunched with a real scramble going on up front. Darrell Curtis on the AGA Panasonic Pro Action KTM led from Grant Bloomfield on the Lesotho Office Equipment Honda right on his tail. Alfie Cox on the Castrol KTM was closing in for the kill with Alan Julian on another Lesotho Office Equipment Honda also well placed. There was a terrific battle going on between Alex Valls on the Antelix Dairy KTM and Lance Trethaway on another of the LEO Hondas with riders still having problems finding the right route. The impressive Vickers van Dierwinder had the quad racer category under control on the Jojo Tanks Yamaha, with Richard Manning out in front of the 200 motorcycle class on the dealer team Yamaha. At the front of the field it was all over by the shouting for Arfie Reinecke and Robin Houghton in the Bank Frontier to Land Cruiser. At the final control, Reinecke knew another Barberspan 500 win was in the bag and he was all smiles. With the SBM Land Rover's V8 engine still sounding crisp, Cliff Barker and Markham Joubert were running second in the production vehicle category, trailing Reineke and Houghton by around 25 minutes. Barker and Joubert had opened up a 15-minute gap over the Nissan Sani in the hands of Neil Woolridge and Paul for Mark. A 
Another barber spun triumph for R.P. Reinecke and a tremendous result for Toyota runners with six of the top eight placings in the production vehicle category. We zit in deel gehad wat ons dier een swamp moes gaan wat omtrent 5 kilometers oor die veld gestrek het. En die instructie was na die, of voor die swamp was dat die met die merkers vol. En op die einde van die swamp was daar bloekenbos gewees. En in die deskant sien ons twee of drie verskillende bloekenbos. En dan weet ons nie wat het een van die twee te met jy na rij nie. En dan sit jy met die probleem, jy kan nie net rij waar jy wil nie, want dit is aan mekaar hierdie swampe en hierdie, jy weet nie wanneer val jy in een van die sit en jy sit vast nie. Like good wine, Richard Carolling gets better as the years go by. There were no frills attached to his victory in the special vehicle category in the Rubrication Equipment Raceco, and he steadily ground the opposition into submission. A tremendous performance saw Marius Bahrain second overall and take Class B honours in the mighty mag. Third overall went to Nick Harper and Richard Hill after a steady drive in the Pro-M Rock Oil Raceco. Richard Carolyn's victory in the Barberspan 500 gave him his second special vehicle win of the season, with it an early grip on the championship. There's no enjoyment in it, it's just survival. It's just a matter of getting out there, keeping the car on the road and just driving carefully and just keeping it moving forward. As long as you do that, you stand a chance. To no one's great surprise, Vickers van Deerwinder came cruising home on the Jojo Tanks Yamaha Banshee to take overall honours in the quad racer category. Van Deventer had over 20 minutes in hand over Yuri Duplessis, who put in a late charge to open up a gap of over 40 minutes on third-placed Benny van der Westezen, with Christo van der Merwe, the first of the standard quads. Vickers van Deventer is unbeaten in long-distance and short-course events this season, and is currently the dominant force in South African quad racing. I was so thankful for the race, the boers had the race over for the millies. I can't enjoy the race, the more modder the race is, it's good, I can play it, it's very good. But the race was very strong, I noticed it on the next day in the ice section. I don't know if the stickers have been taken, but otherwise it was good. There was late drama in the motorcycle category. Alfie Cox on the Castrol Pro Action KTM was at the front of the field at the final bike refuel point with teammate Daryl Curtis out of the running. Behind Cox, a terrific scramble had developed with Brian Bontekuning on the Shumwells Yamaha up into the top three, along with Alex Bowles on the Antelex Dairy KTM. There was also Bedlam at the refuel point as Grant Broomfield on the Basutu Office Equipment Honda appeared on the scene. The final act of what had been a terrific race held a few more surprises. Every second was now crucial with Bontekunen first away from the refuel, only to drop out of the race on the run into the finish. A fired up Bloomfield caught Vowles in the final leg to finish second ahead of Lance Trethaway and Louis Kotzer. For Alfie Cox it was a win that was expected, but one which didn't come easy. Today was just unbelievably tough. I think it was just pressure all the way and you know I was under pressure being so far behind. You have to take chances if you want to make up time. I had a big big crash today, one I haven't had in a long long time. And, uh, but it's the way it is, you just have to take chances, you, 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 you just can't you know, uh, say on this straight, okay it's a little bit rough, maybe I'll take it easy. You just got to hold it wide open because if you don't you're never going to catch those front guys, the minutes that you've lost. Next up in the 1996 South African Off-Road Championship is the Sugarbelt 400 in Natal on April 26 and 27.